Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Let's solve these two problems. In the first problem, it is said that express f1, f2 and f3 as Cartesian vectors, right? So, for that what we will do is that we will resolve these three forces into its components, right? So, first if I resolve f1 into its components, right? So, it will have one component uh, which will be acting in the positive y direction like this, right? So, this, this will be f1 y component and we will have one another component which will be acting parallel to the x-axis right like this so this one is f1x right so we can write f1 as a cartesian vector like this so f1 vector will be equal to f1x and this is acting in the i direction plus f1yg right so now as we can see that f1x is the sine component right since uh, f1 is making uh, 40 degrees with the y axis is right so we can write that f1 vector is equal to so f1 axis sine component so we can write that this is 15 15 kN newton is the magnitude of f1 right so this is 15 sine of 40 degrees and this is i plus f1 y is the cos component right so i will write 15 cos of 40 degrees j right so 15 sine of 40 this is 9.64 right so we can write that this is 9.64 i plus 15 cos of 40 so this is 11.49 right so 11. 49 g right so this is the vector representation of f1 right this is the cartesian vector of f1 right similarly we can we can resolve f2 into its components right so f2 will have one component which will be acting in the negative x direction right and similarly it will have one component which will be acting in the uh, positive y direction right so we can write that this one will be f2 x and this one will be f2 y and we are considering this angle let's say that this angle is theta right so here we are given this theta in the form of this triangle right so we will consider this theta right so i can write that f2 vector this will be equal to f2 x i plus f2 y j right so we can write that f2 vector so f2 x is the cos component right? so it is 26 cos of we can write here is let me write here that f2 x is 26 cos of theta and cos of theta from this triangle is base divided by hypotenuse right so we can write this is 26 12 divided by 13 right so i can write here as 26 into 12 divided by 13 into i right and since this f2 x is acting in the negative direction so we have to put negative sign here right so and as we can see that f2 y is the sine component i can write that f2 y will be equal to 26 sine of theta right and sine of theta from this triangle will be perpendicular divided by hypotenuse right so i can write this 26 and perpendicular is 5 divided by hypotenuse which is 13 right so we can write that this is plus 26 into 5 divided by 13 and this is g right so from this we can write f2 vector so this is 13 into 2 so this is 2 into 12 so this is minus 24 i and this is plus so this is again 13 to 26 and this is 10 right so 10 j so this is f2 vector right now similarly we can resolve f3 into its components right so we can write that f3 cartesian vector this is equal to f3x into i plus f3yg right so now if i resolve f3 into its components so it will have one component which will be acting in the positive x direction and similarly it will have one component which will be acting in the negative y direction like this right so now as we can see that this is f1x so this will be the cos component right uh, sorry this is f3x right so f3x we can write that f3 vector 
this is f3 x is the cos component right so this will be 36 cos of 30 degrees right and similarly uh, this f3 x is acting in the positive so it will be positive and it is acting in the positive i direction similarly this is f3 y right so it is acting in the negative y direction so i will write minus and this is 36 sine of 30 degrees right so 36 cos of 30 this is 31.18 i minus 36 sine of 30 so this is 18 right so this is minus 18 g right so now in the second problem it is said that determine the magnitude of the resultant force and its direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis right so we have to find the resultant of these three forces right so in the first in this problem we have found the vectors of f1 f2 and f3 so now it is easy for us to find the resultant of these three forces since our x is the the component of the resultant in along the x-axis is, is equal to f1 x magnitude plus f2 x plus f3 x right so we can write that our x is equal to so f1 x this is f1 x which is 9.64 f2 x is minus 24 and f3 x is 31.18 plus right so we can find the rx magnitude so 9.64 minus 24 plus 31.18 so rx is 16.82 16.82 newtons kilonewtons sorry since all these are in kilonewtons so the rx will also be in kilonewtons right we can write the units here as well right so this is in kilonewtons similarly this is also in kilonewtons and similarly this is also in kilonewtons right so our x is 16.82 kilonewtons and similarly our y will be equal to f1 y plus f2 y plus f3 y right so f1 y is 11.49 so 11.49 this is plus 10 and this is minus 18 right so 11.49 plus 10 minus 18 so our y is 3.49 right so our y magnitude is 3.49 kilo newtons right so now if i draw the resultant vector so let's say that this is my positive x and this is my positive y so our x has one component which is acting in the positive x direction right so let's say this is our x and our y is acting in the positive y direction right so this is our y and if we aid our x and our y by head to tail rule like this right this is our y so they must give us the resultant vector right so this is the resultant of our x and our y right so now in the problem we are required to find the direction measured counterclockwise from the positive x axis is right so we need to measure this angle we need to find this angle theta right so now we can apply tan theta to this triangle so tan theta will be equal to r y divided by r x and similarly theta will be equal to 10 inverse r y so r y is 3.49 and r x is 16.82 so 10 inverse 3.49 divided by 16.82 so the angle is 11.72 right? so theta is 11.72 degrees and similarly if you want to find the resultant magnitude so then we can apply the pythagoras theorem to this triangle right so then this is equal to r x square plus r y square and then we will take the square root right so r x magnitude is 16.82 
plus Ry is 3.49 squared. So the resultant magnitude is 17.18. 17.18 kilonewton, right? So this is the solution of these two problems, right?